Hi. In this problem, we'll work through an example of calculating a distribution for a random variable using the method of derived distributions. So in general, the process goes as follows. We know the distribution for some random variable x, and what we want is the distribution for another random variable y, which is somehow related to x through some function g. So y is some g of x. And the steps that we follow uh, we can actually just kind of summarize them using these four, four steps. The first step is to write out the CDF of Y. So Y is the thing that we want, and what we'll do is we'll write out the CDF first. So remember the CDF is just uh, capital F of Y of Y is the probability that Y, the reign of verbal Y is less than or equal to some, some uh, value little Y. The next thing we'll do is we'll use this relationship that we know between Y and X, and we'll substitute in, um, instead of writing Y, the random variable y in here, we'll write it in terms of x. So we'll plug in, for instead of y, we'll plug in x, and we'll use this function g in order to do that. So what we have now is that, up to here, we would have that the CDF of y is now the probability that the random variable x is less than or equal to some value little y. Next, what we'll do is we'll actually rewrite this probability as a CDF of x. So the CDF of x, remember, is would be f x um, is that the probability of x is less than or equal to some little x. And then once we have that, if we differentiate this, what we get is um, when we differentiate the CDF of x, we get the PDF of x. And what we presume is that we know this PDF already. And from that, what we get is when we differentiate this thing, we get the PDF of y. So through this whole process, what we get is we'll get a relationship between the PDF of y and the PDF of x. So that is the process for calculating out the PDF of y using x. So let's go into our specific example in this case. What we're told is that x, the one that we know, is a standard normal random variable, meaning that it's mean 0 and uh, variance 1. And so we know the form of the PDF. The PDF of x is uh, this, 1 over square root of 2 pi e to the minus x squared over 2. And then the next thing that we're told is this relationship between x and y. So what we're told is uh, for uh, if x is negative, then y is minus x. If x is positive, then y is the square root of x. So this is a graphical rep representation of the, the relationship between x and y. All right. So we have everything that we need. And now let's just go through this process and calculate what the PDF of y is. So the first thing that we do is we write out the PDF of y. So the PDF of y is uh, what we what we've written. It's the probability that the random variable y is less than or equal to some little y. All right. Now the next step that we do is we have to substitute in um, instead of in terms of y, we want to substitute it in terms of x because we actually know uh, stuff about x, but we don't know anything about y. So what is the probability that y the random variable y is less than or equal to some little y. Well, let's go back to this relationship and see if we can figure that out. So let's pretend that uh, here is our little y. Well, if the random variable y is less than or equal to little y, it has to be underneath this horizontal line. Right? And in order for it to be underneath this horizontal line, that means that x has to be between uh, this range. And what is this range? This range goes from minus y to y squared. All right, so why is that? It's because in this, in this portion, x and y are related as uh, y is negative x, and here it's y is square root of x. Right, so if x is y squared, then y would be y. If x is negative y, then y would be y. All right, so this is the range that we're looking for. So if y, the random variable y is less than or equal to little y, then um, this is the same as if the random variable x is between negative y and y squared. So let's plug that in. This is the same as the probability that x is between negative y and y squared. All right, so that's, those are the first two steps. Now the third step is we have to rewrite this as a CDF of x. Right, so right now, we have it in terms of a probability of, x, of some event related to x. 
Let's actually transform that to be explicitly in terms of the CDF of x. So how do we do that? Um, well, this is just the probability that x is within some range. So we can turn that into the CDF by writing it as a difference of two uh, CDFs. So this is the same as probability that x is less than equal to y squared minus the probability that x is less than or equal to negative y. All right, so in order to find the probability that x is between this, this range, we take the probability that it's uh, less than y squared, which is everything here, and then we subtract out the probability that it's uh, less than y, negative y. So what we're left with is just within this range. All right, so these actually are now uh, exactly CDFs of x. Right, so this is f of x uh, evaluated at y squared, and this is f of x evaluated at negative y. So now we've completed step three, and the last step that we need to do is differentiate. So if we differentiate both sides of this equation with respect to y, we'll get that the left side we get what we want, which is the PDF of y. Now we differentiate the right side, we'll have to invoke the chain rule. So the first thing that we do is, well, this is a, uh, a CDF of x. So when we differentiate, we'll get the PDF of x. But then we also have to invoke the chain rule for this argument inside. So the derivative of y squared would give us an extra term 2y. And then similarly, this would give us the PDF of x evaluated at negative y, plus uh, the chain rule will give us an extra term of negative 1. All right, so let's just clean this up a little bit. So it's 2y fx y squared plus fx minus y. All right, so now we're almost done. We differentiated. We have the PDF of y, which is what we're looking for, and we're, we've written in terms of the PDF of x. And fortunately, we know what that is. So once we plug that in, we're essentially done. So what is the PDF? Well, the PDF of x evaluated y squared is going to give us 1 over square root of 2 pi e to the minus. Uh, so in this case, x is y squared. So we get y to the fourth over 2. And then we get another 1 over square root of 2 pi e to the minus y squared over 2. OK. And now we're almost done. The last thing that we need to take care of is what is the range? And remember, it's, it's important uh, when you calculate out PDFs to always think about the ranges where things are valid. So when we think about this, what, what is the range that, where this actually is valid? Well, y, remember, is related to x in this relationship. So as we, if we look at this, we see that y can never be negative right? because um, no matter what x is, y gets transformed into some non-negative version. So what we know is that this is now actually valid only for y greater than 0. And for y less than 0, the PDF is 0. So this gives us the final PDF of y. All right, so it seems like at first when you start doing these derived distribution problems that it's pretty difficult. Uh, but if we just remember that there are these pretty um, straightforward steps that we follow, as, and as long as you go through these steps and do them methodically, then you can actually come up with the solution for any of these problems. And one last thing to remember is uh, to always think about what are the ranges where these things are valid. Because the relationship between these two random variables could be pretty complicated, and you need to always be aware of when things are non-zero and when they're zero. All right, so I hope that was helpful, and see you next time.